episode, we're going to talk about more forgotten action figure play sets from the 1980s. Only this time, it's going to have a little bit of a G.I. Joe spin. So, stick around. Hello, fellow dorks and dorkettes, and welcome to Nostalgia Syndrome. My name is Rob, and like I said, in this episode, we're going to talk about more of those forgotten action figure play sets from the 1980s. Only this time, I'm going to equate them to the G.I. Joe toy line from the 1980s to celebrate G.I. Joe July here at the channel. Now, I know, play sets were a great thing, especially if they were versatile. If you could use them with any of your toy lines. Now, these play sets that we will be taking a look at would have fit perfectly within your G.I. Joe collection. Heck, they might even fit in great now with your G.I. Joe collection. Now, I just want to say before we get started that a lot of these toy lines that we will be talking about were kind of, sort of, directly inspired by G.I. Joe, so it's not that much of a stretch, but these are just little play sets and bigger play sets that I don't remember ever seeing on the shelf, that when I look at them now, I can just see all the limitless possibilities of how you know, G.I. Joe could have functioned within them. So anyway, without further ado, let's get to number one. Number one on the list comes from one of my personal favorite toy companies growing up, and that is Remco. Remco released a toy line called The Bad Guys, and they released them in like a He-Man style and also a G.I. Joe style. Now, what we are looking at is the G.I. Joe style, and the playset is the Gorilla Enemy camp set. Now, I want to point out before we get too deep in this, I've never noticed this on the packaging before. Because you may be asking yourself, who are they the bad guys of? And Remco spells it out directly. They are the bad guys of Sergeant Rock, which was one of their own toy lines, G.I. Joe and M.A.S.H. and all other mini-action soldiers. M.A.S.H. That's a weird thing to throw in there. Anyway, this set was released in 1982, and I actually think it came out before the G.I. Joe Bivouac, but this set is a lot like that G.I. Joe set released by Hasbro. Although, this tent is one that you actually have to pitch yourself. It's an actual, like, vinyl sheet camouflage that I believe it comes with little poles and stuff that you actually make the tent yourself, which, in my opinion, gets extra points. I think that's pretty cool. It also comes with different weapons like a bazooka, an M16, a radio call box, and a cot, like the bivouac set, and also like that set, a shovel and a machete. It also comes with a figure, and as you can see in these pictures, the figure is very, yeah, non-posable. It's nowhere near articulated as Hasbro's G.I. Joe figures, but these bad guy figures, along with the Sergeant Rock figures, fit perfectly in your G.I. Joe playtime universe. And I always enjoyed the Remco toys because they were at that price point that your parents were probably more comfortable in paying while you're shopping at Kmart. And that's where my fond memories come from because they were a toy that was more readily acceptable growing up poor, we'll just say. But anyway, the bad guys by Remco, the Gorilla Enemy Camp Set. For number two, we are going to pivot right over to the Sergeant Rock toy line that was also released by Remco in 1982. And I think this is one of the most ingenious play sets I have ever seen because it doubles as a carrying case. This reminds me so much of like the Barbie RV and stuff that I remember seeing growing up because it's like a vinyl sealed overlay over cardboard pretty much. Now, what you get with this carrying case is a nice image of a burnt out husk of a house 
that probably draws a great inspiration from the World War II setting of the Sergeant Rock comic book. Now, I also want to point out that on this carrying case, you have a really awesome picture of Sergeant Rock, that, but it just, it looks great. Now, what you get with this playset, other than an awesome carrying case, is a sandbagged, like, foxhole with a machine gun placement. Now, that doesn't sound like a lot, but I think it plays into the, you know, whole thing that it's a carrying case because the foxhole is pretty big and it's just a little machine gun. So, you put those in the carrying case and you can toss all your figures on top of it. Now, it goes without saying that this would be so awesome for your G.I. Joe figures because of the sandbagged foxhole, machine gun, and carrying case. But the one thing that you get with this that is really awesome and very versatile is the bombed out house background. I mean, it has active flames in the windows. It also comes with little cardboard pieces that you can add, it looks like different roof sections and things like that. And it looks like it's directly inspired from, like I said, a World War II battle scene of defending a, you know, city that's being overrun by evil forces. I mean, you could drop your G.I. Joes into the same situation as they're fighting off Cobra. It just fits perfectly with any wartime scenario. And like I said, you get the added bonus of a carrying case. I mean, so what if it says Sergeant Rock on it? It has an awesome, like I said, Joe Kerbert inspired art piece on the side that, yeah, just looks badass no matter what. The next playset comes from one of the toy lines that those pesky bad guys would pester, and those are the MASH toys. And this playset was released in 1982 by TriStar, and it is the MASH military base. And this thing looks awesome and would be perfect for your G.I. Joe toys because it is a full function military base, like out on the front lines. And let's go over everything it has on the package because there is so much awesome stuff with this. And it actually says right on the package that this is perfect for all three and three quarter action figures. So let me read what it has. It has the MASH 4077 headquarters for your Colonel Potter action figure. It also comes with the Swamp, or Officer's Quarters, an Officer's Mess Hall, which includes benches and tables, a pre-op ward for emergency surgeries, a hospital with beds for all your wounded, a 16 square foot printed play mat, and 83 various pieces that add to the great play value of this set. Now the buildings as it says, are made with high-impact plastic with removable roofs. It looks like it has various pieces of, you know, military base furniture to put within those tents. And like I said, this just looks perfect for G.I. Joe out on the front lines. I mean, of course, it's missing all those high-tech, you know, different pieces of equipment that G.I. Joe would use. but. I mean, this is a bare basic military camp that would fit perfectly. I mean, you could picture Lifeline and Doc working in the hospital. You could have, you know, Law and Order or Mutton Junkyard patrolling the area. I, I just see many different things, but a character like Sci-Fi or Fast Draw might be a little out of place here, but for that, like, OG82 G.I. Joe, group, you know, Rock and Roll, Snake Eyes, Grunt, Short Fuse, all of them, this would be perfect for them. It fits perfectly because of the more grounded style that the earlier years had. Anyway, I see a playset like this and I can envision 101 awesome situations to put my G.I. Joe figures in. So this actually, I would love to get one day, but just with some quick research, this thing goes for well over $200 still in the package, which really isn't that hateful, but that's still 200 bucks I don't have laying around. Number four on the list is, as the package states, 
the headquarters of America's premier strike force, Migos Eagle Force. Now, this was released in 1981, and yes, the Eagle Force figures were a little bit smaller and die cast, but this playset looks like it could be very versatile because honestly, it's just a lot of rocky outcroppings and steps and stuff. So, in my opinion, even though these are a smaller scale figure, this playset looks like it would still be pretty fun for your G.I. Joe figures. Now, like I said, the front of Eagle Island is a bunch of rocky outcroppings with an awesome eagle head at the top, which, believe me, fits any military motif because America, eagles, it all goes together. Anyway, it looks like it has like little outcroppings and stuff that make perfect display places to set your figures. At least that's how they have the Eagle Force figures posed in some of the literature that I've seen. But the other side of it is, you know, like their HQ, but it looks spacious enough to accommodate bigger figures. And of course, I'm just shooting from the hip and I have no personal experience with this at all. So if I'm wrong, just please tell me in a nice way. But anyway, like I said, the inside has different floors, which are kind of very bare bone, with different ladders and things that look to be the size that a three and three quarter action figure could use. But, I mean, it comes with cannons, it comes with different ammo boxes and weapon racks, and like dozens of different weapons and armaments that would fit the Mego figures, the little Eagle Force figures, that might work for G.I. Joe, even though they would look kind of smaller in their hands, but it might still work. I don't know. It's worth a shot. But again, this is a play set that I take a look at, and even though it's a smaller scale, I can see it being very fun for having a mountain you know, diorama kind of thing to display your different Joe figures on or have Alpine climbing it or, you know, something like that. And the cannons and stuff that are at the base of the, you know, mountain, I mean, they go with anything. Cannons, no matter what size, are very functional for, you know, G.I. Joe or other figures of that scale. But like I said, I'm very curious to see just the difference in the figure scales just how fun this would be for G.I. Joe figures. It's a challenge I would love to accept, but from what I've seen, this goes for a pretty penny as well. Pretty much anything from our era goes for a lot of money. So it's just a scenario I have to keep in my imagination. Our fifth and final forgotten 80s playset comes from French toy company Burchett and their somewhat odd official Doctors Without Borders toy line. This 1989 medical tent is almost perfect for your G.I. Joe figures. And yes, I may be a little biased because Doc is one of my favorite G.I. Joe figures of all time. And this tent would fit perfectly with him and Lifeline. Now this medical tent kind of makes this episode a full circle, as the first toy we looked at was a tent as well. Except that tent was one that you had to put together yourself out of a sheet of plastic. This is actually a molded tent, and what's perfect about it is that you can plop it down virtually anywhere. Your living room, on the couch, outside. It can go anywhere. But the really neat aspect of this is accessories like an operating table, different lights, medical equipment, and a stretcher. Pair that with Lifeline's oxygen tank and you have a fully functional G.I. Joe triage medical center. Now it has a Red Cross symbol and Doctors Without Borders written in French on the tent, but if those are just decals that you can take off or not apply at all, this tent would be perfect for any G.I. Joe character. General Hawk could have his HQ in here. You could set up a little table with maps and he could be telling the Joe forces where to go on Cobra Island and who to kill, essentially. 
Now, I know that goes against everything Doctors Without Borders stands for, but if they don't know, it can't hurt them. Okay, folks, that was five more forgotten 80s playsets. And in this episode, we viewed it through a spectrum of G.I. Joe compatibility. And like I said at the beginning of the episode, some of these toy lines were directly inspired by G.I. Joe, but some of them were their own thing, and they produced some really cool and compatible playsets and accessories. Like the MASH toy line, that has some really cool offerings that we've looked at in Raddest Rides and now Forgotten 80s playsets. Anyway, thank you for joining me for another episode in our celebration of G.I. Joe here in July, which we dub G.I. Joe July. So, I hope you enjoyed the episode. If you did, please give me a thumbs up. If you got something to say, please leave a comment. I love reading them, and I love getting back to everybody. And if you're new around here and you enjoyed this, or any of the episodes that YouTube is recommending down here, please hit subscribe. And if you hit that little bell icon, you will be notified whenever there's a new episode. So anyway, until next time, thanks for watching. Keep being rad, and stay dorky, and yo Joe.